first thing we should all focus on is pre-made templates. So instead of building something from scratch, you review and understand what templates we've already built for you that you can easily leverage. So when you come onto your dashboard page, you'll see there are four options. Click on each one of the four, and you'll come to a page like this, where you have the option to start from scratch or select a template. Click select a template, and then you'll be able to see all the pre-made template options we have. For some people, you'll be able to view the pre-made templates directly on your dashboard, uh, which was over here, instead of having to go into uh, clicking the calculator and then coming to select the template. But once you get to select the template, these are the calculator options. So you can see that for every industry, I can see from, from these options, I can see the types of calculators that exist, and then I can just click all and view all of the calculator specific pre-made templates. Now, if you don't find anything you like from the calculator templates or you don't find your industry, then I would go to the outcome quiz templates. So again, I would click outcome quiz on the dashboard over here. Then this page would open. And I, instead of start from scratch, I click select a template. And then I'd review all the templates that are available. The trending ones, TV and entertainment, travel, and I just can click all if I want to just review all of them. And you can keep doing this for graded quizzes and for polls. Okay, select the template, review the options. As soon as you find one you like, you click. So let's say we come here, we go into travel. Um, how much can I save by staying in a hotel versus a, ho a hostel versus a hotel? Click use template. When you click use template, the calculator will load for you like this. So you come in, everything's done. How much can I save by staying in a hostel versus a hotel? The lead gen is done, the question is done, the formula is done, the results page are done. Right? So it's all complete. Now, the challenge though is that you might have a specific goal from this quiz or calculator that you're trying to highlight that is not taken into consideration. So for example, how much can I save in staying in a hostel versus a hotel? If you go to question one, there are eight options. Which city are you planning to travel to? Now, if you're in travel, you might say, actually, I really want to make sure Los Angeles is added. So this is the next, the next thing is how do I modify these pre-made templates? Okay, and that's the next thing I want to go over here, which is I have a pre-made template and I want to adjust the values and the formula for my specific business. How do I go about doing that? So let's go back into the calculator and do a run through. So I'm going to go to question one on the left. When I click on the left question one, the center screen will go to question one and the right side will show me all the options in question one. So the way you want to think about the builder, which you can see here we're in the build view, is that the left is where you navigate to the section. The middle shows you a preview and the right shows you the editing of that section. So I clicked Q1, I get the question, and I want to edit it. And I want to add a ninth option here. So I'm going to scroll down on the right side, where it's the editing option. I'll see eight options. So I'm going to add a ninth one. And we just said we wanted to add the ninth one as Los Angeles. Okay, US. Okay, so this is good. And now I can add an image, right? I click add an image. And then I can uh, either add an image or I can upload an image here for uh, LA. Uh, and then you can select the image from your, um, from your photos. Now, the next question is, we've added LA, we can easily add the image, right? I can. Just to make it look good, I'll add uh, something. And just for now, let's just assume we're adding this plus sign, okay? Um, but I would usually upload and add an image, okay? Now the question is, how do I adjust the values? And we really need to understand what these values mean in the context of the formula to figure out what value to assign Los Angeles. 
So let me walk you through how to think about this. For every option, we can see a set of values, right? Let's take Paris, 78. When you go to question two, it says, how long do you plan to stay? So four days is the default value, right? You can see here, four is default. So obviously, in this case, the value of a question that's a slider is just the value that someone inputs in the slider. So you know that if someone clicks four days, it's four. Whereas in question one, if someone selected Paris, you don't know what the value is. So you have to assign a value to it, 78. Now we want to really understand what does this 78 actually mean? The way to do that is to look at the result, right? Just by looking at Q1 and Q2, I could think maybe 78 is the percentage differential between hotel and hostel prices because I know that the title is how much can I save in a hostel versus a hotel. Another analysis is that maybe 78 is the dollar differential on average between hostels and hotels in Paris. But we can figure that out as soon as we click on the result tab on the left. Navigate to results, go to result one, click on the formula. It says it's Q1 times Q2 is the dollar savings. You can see that the prefix unit of variable is dollars. That means that Q1 times Q2 is your total dollar savings. So if you stayed one day, Q2 would be one, and Q1 would be, in, in, the, uh, in the Paris example, Q1 was, let's see, 78. So 78 times one would be $78, if Q2 is one day. So that means that this value 78 is a representation of the daily savings of staying in a hostel over a hotel. And that, that amount in Paris happens to be 78, based on this analysis done. So now I'm coming to Los Angeles and I want to figure out what value to assign Los Angeles. What I need to do is research hotel prices in Los Angeles on average, hostel prices in Los Angeles on average, and take the difference of the daily rates averages. And that number I would input as a value here. Everything else will stay the same. Let's assume, just to keep this simple, that it's a $100 differential. I put $100, I put 100 as a value, I don't put a dollar number because the dollar was already assigned, as you remember, in the result as the unit in the result. So I don't need to put dollar twice. I just put it in the result. Over here, you just put the actual number. And then you come into the result, and you're done. Q1 times Q2. Everything else stays the same, and you're good to go. Okay? That's basically the formula. Uh, you know, the key thing to think about is that whenever you put a formula, uh, question number here, this formula needs a number associated with each option. And if there are numerical sliders or numerical text input, then the value is clear. If it's a single select question, like LA versus Paris, then you need to assign values to each option so that the formula knows what number to put for each response that the user inputs. And that's what Q1 times Q2 actually, how it actually formula, formulates the answer. Okay. So now the next thing is, how do I make a more advanced formula, right? If you have a mortgage calculator or if you have some more complex math. So our tool can actually handle very complex scenarios. But let's take an interesting use case. For this example, let's assume that if someone stays over eight days, that the savings of staying in a hostel versus a hotel are reduced by 10%. And the reason there's a 10% reduction is because hotels tend to give you a 10% larger discount compared to the discount hostels give you on long-term stays. This is something I'm just giving you as an example. Um, it's, I just made it up, but I just want to show you how to use, this is a little more complex use case, and how to use the algebra formula in this more complex use case. So the first thing you want to do is go back into the formula, Q1 times Q2, and let's edit it. We just said that if Q2 is greater than or equal to 8, things change a little bit, right? So if Q, uh, Q2 is greater than or equal to 8, 
I'm going to put a question mark to indicate if. So if that's the case, if we're greater than or equal to eight days, then we said there is a 10% reduction in savings. So we're going to say this is your savings, Q1 times Q2, but there's a 10% reduction in it. So you're actually only going to save 90% instead of the full 100%. Okay, I can just times it by 9 over 10, or I can times it by 0 0.9. And that would be the value of if it's over if it's over 8. If it's less than 8, so if it's 1 through 0 through 7, then the, the savings are just Q1 times Q2. Right? Because in that case, that 9 over 10 uh, variable is no longer required. And that's it. So I just created an if statement where I put the question, everything before the question was the condition. Everything after the question and before the colon is the true statement. So if Q2 is greater than or equal to 8, if that's true, then apply this formula, Q1 times Q2 times 9 over 10. If it's not true, then apply Q1 times Q2, and you're done. You apply the formula, and you're done. Okay? And that basically covers advanced... Formulas. You can have more advanced things like logarithms and rounding and upper bounds, lower bounds, etc. Um, but as you get into that, make sure to leverage this chat feature whenever you have any questions. So you can just click chat, then it loads up, you click new conversation, and you click, you know, you say, I have a question about building an advanced formula. Can you help? All right, question mark, and then you can do enter, and then you can wait for them to reply back. All right, um, and this is a great thing. You should use this as much as possible um, as you go along because this is a great, um, this is a kind of a great and powerful way to access the, our customer success team and get their inputs and get their advice instead of you having tried to come up with all this stuff uh, on your own. Okay. So let me just notify them uh, that I'm just testing. So I can just reply here and just say, you know, just testing, don't worry about this. So now I'm going to go back and see what do we do to optimize and create conditional messaging, right? So we've, when we create a calculator on the results page, we have the same message here for all users right now. And we have the same image. We don't have to have it like that. We can add a conditional message and say, I want different results to show for different users. And I want to have a conditional call to action for every user, meaning a different button that, a different, that, that people who land on the result page, the button that they see is different based on the result range they see, the result range they're in. So let's kind of dig a little deeper here. So when you go into question one, the maximum value is 100. And when you go into question two, the maximum value is 16. So the maximum value for R1 is 1,600, right? You can't get more than 1,600. And the minimum value is zero. Right? If you're staying for zero days, if Q2 is zero, then the minimum value would be zero. So what I have to do is I need to basically set conditions from zero to 1600 of what types of outputs I want to show. For simplicity, I'm just going to do zero to 800, or let's do zero to, um, yeah, zero to 800. Okay. And then for condition two, I'm going to do 800 to to 1200 and for condition 3 I click add condition 1200 to 1600 and I have to make it less than or equal to because if I just had less than uh, we would have no option for someone who actually was at, was in LA for 16 days their value would be 1600 and I wouldn't have the equal condition here so none of my three conditions would be satisfied and it would return an error. So you want to make sure you are covering all potential values. The second thing I wanted to mention was that notice how I've, the conditions are non-overlapping. This goes from 0 to 800, and this goes from 800 to 1,200. 
if I put less than or equal to 800 here, then they would be overlapping because the value 800, if a user gets the value 800, they would satisfy both condition one and condition two. Whereas if I make this strictly less than, 799 would be condition one, 800 would be condition two. Okay? And then the next thing under conditional messaging is to customize this message. So you can say here, you only save, you know, R1. You can say here, you only save R1. This is less than average or something. Because we know that these are people who are saving between 0 and 800. In R1, here you would say, this is average, okay? Or something, and you can have a subheading as well. Um, reasonable amount of saving. Savings. And then for R3, um, you can say, you know, you know amazing. Uh, amazing result. Huge savings. Okay? And now you've gotten a good gist of the, uh, you've given them kind of a more personalized message based on their result. Then you can have a different image, so you can upload different images for each one. You can have a different uh, redirect users to URLs. So this button here can be like, um, you know, you know, get a hostel, right? Because it's a big, you're saving, you know, a large amount. This is condition three. You're saving such a high amount, you should definitely get a hostel. And then you can just put a link, you know, and open it in a new tab and you're done with that. And so then for the other one, you might say for R1, you might say you all probably should get a hotel because it's low savings. So you might put here, you know, get a hotel. And then you would adjust the link for each one. And then for R2, you could either you could put either, you can say subscribe to social feeds, you know, like, or you can put share on social media. And you go where you ask them here like to share on social. So that covers that. The next thing is logic jump. So when it comes to logic jump, you really want to understand where and when should we use logic jump. So I'm going to open a new calculator here, and this calculator is how much can you save in real estate taxes now? Question one says, what type of real estate do you invest in? Do you invest in residential or commercial, right? Do you invest in like homes for living or do you invest in office for commercial use case? Now, if you notice, question two asks specifically about, goes deeper into commercial, whereas question three goes deeper into residential. In this case, you would want to have logic jump to segment people based on their answer to question one. So what I would do is I would click on question one, click logic jump, and I would say, if question one is residential, go to question three, which asks specifically about residential. If it is not, then you know it's commercial because there's only two options to question one. So you put in all other cases, jump to the commercial question, and you click done. And this will create a logic jump. Now there's another thing I need to do. When someone goes to question two, put type of commercial, you don't want them to go to question three. You want them to skip question three on residential. So what I would do is I'd go to question two, click logic jump, and say for any option, any, any answer filled on question two, if it's filled, then just jump to question four because we don't want them to go to residential which is question three. And then you can say, in all other cases, jump to question four as well, because in, in all cases, you want them to go to question four. So I click done. So now I've set up logic jump. Now let's say I want to preview it. I click preview, and I can test out how this works on web, tablet, and mobile. So I can say, okay, get started. This is kind of the mobile view. What type of real estate you invest in? So now let's see, if I click commercial, it takes me to the commercial question. I answer, it should skip the residential question and jump to question four, and it did that. So that's correct. If I go back to question one, if I change commercial to residential, it skips the commercial option and jumps to residential, and then go from residential to Q4, which is correct. All right? So that covers logic jump.